Good day, everybody. Daniel and Matt here from GI Energy again. Today we're talking about SIG Energy versus BYD. Which battery should you install in 2025? Quick answer: I would take SIG Energy, Matt. Absolutely, yeah, SIG Energy. So we're going to do what we usually do and go through a few different topics here and try and be as as, as honest and non-biased as we can. We do install both batteries. They're both great products. So we're going to go through and go by um, company and support first, followed by price, aesthetic, and design backup capability, physical size and kilowatt hours of storage, uh, installation location, EV integration, which is becoming more and more important, safety, and then lastly, warranty. So we'll start with the company and support. Who wins that one, Matt? I guess that's the one that you probably would say BYD have the edge, absolutely. Uh, they've been around longer. Obviously, they're very, very well known now for the cars. That's uh, obviously become mainstream on Australian roads. I know a bunch of people that now have a BYD car that probably two or three years ago had never even heard of one yes, so especially the shark yeah that's, yeah that's been pretty cool Great and car. um they seem to have displaced obviously a lot of the other bigger ev manufacturers obviously very affordable cars as well that are great but moving it to the to the home battery side um they've been around a lot longer um yeah. i guess the integration initially was with fronius and byd are releasing their own inverter and an updated range of their batteries so not too sure obviously what will happen there the integration with Thronius will still be there but ultimately i guess where we have had to look at a system it's been through Thronius for support which is obviously pretty good generally and there's someone there that can help you um but if you're going by the size of the company purely in this here byd is a monster of yeah. a company so yeah. they've, they've got a lot more runs on the board sig energy are making huge waves and um very very exciting company um but to be yeah straight down the line, they haven't been around as long as BYD and aren't as big at this stage. Yeah, I think there's two unknowns there as well with the support. Sig Energy are growing their support team. Obviously, yeah. as every support team is at the moment with the way the industry is, they're a bit stressed, and <clears throat> um, but that's everybody. Yeah. And then the unknown with BYD is we haven't had their support yet because it's yeah. been all Fronius. Yeah, for so, sure. So um, they've been obviously looking after BYD tech inquiries as with that combination, but um, it sounds like that's going to end with the BYD they're obviously Fronius aren't going to provide support for BYD inverters, so we'll no. see. But I agree that they win that one on the company grounds for yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next, price. Both premium batteries, really. They're, they're, they're both um, of a fairly similar price point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, price points on par. Um, I guess there's a difference there in some parts because of the integration that BYD has with, with Fronius. And potentially, if you have a Fronius inverter already, there's the firmware, paid firmware unlocking fee. Um, whereas the SIG Energy obviously is an all-in-one unit with the gateway. So if you're going off just the battery module cost, yeah. it's pretty much on par. Um, when you're building a larger SIG Energy solution, obviously the price is slightly better because you've got more storage per dollar spent yeah. and then the all-in-one integration. So I think they're, yeah, if you, if you go in towards a, a, you know, I mean more than a sort of modest battery, 15, 16 kilowatt hours or more, the SIG Energy is going to be slightly more affordable for sure. Yeah. yeah, per dollar spent anyway for the, for the storage you're getting, absolutely. And to clarify what you were saying before about the existing inverters, if you've got a Fronius Gen 24 inverter that's uh, already installed at your home, then that obviously will pair with the BYD battery. Yeah. There may be an unlocking fee, which unlocks it to be then used with the battery, or you may have purchased the Plus model, so you don't have to do that. Under those circumstances, the smaller stacks are going to work out a bit cheaper, obviously, because yeah. you've already paid for parts of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the next part, which is important to some people and not so much to others, um, is the aesthetics and the design. Um, I mean, BYD are not a terrible looking battery, but no. uh, I'd have to give this one to SIG again. Yeah, as we've said on many other videos, it's the all-in-one, isn't it? It looks slick. Yeah. It's, um, it's just yeah, re really, really attractive looking product. The feedback we've had from installations for a long time now from dozens and dozens of people is how cool it looks. Yeah. Whereas the BYD, Nothing wrong with how it looks. It's um, obviously designed very well, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't touch how, how the Sig looks. I don't think that's unfair to say. That's a bit stretch. more industrial looking, isn't it? It just yeah. looks like a battery. Sig Energy is like a. You could compare it to a Tesla. It's probably the only one yeah. they've actually put a lot of thought into making it look really nice. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, the SunGrow SBH is quite a nice looking battery, but um, yeah, yeah Sig has, has, has got that one. Yeah, um, for sure. Next one was backup power. So um, how do they back up single and three phase? Obviously, we've spoken on other videos about limitation with three phase with a Tesla. Yeah. Not the case with these two. 
but uh, there is still a slight advantage there, I know, with SIG Energy on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, look, we've got a load of sites with BYD on three phase with backup that with through storms and um, obviously other outages have, have worked really, really well. Yeah. I guess really what this one comes down to is the time that it takes. So yeah. there is a delayed time of backup with the, with the BYD battery. Yeah. 30 to 40 seconds in most cases. So it will really probably come down to what your needs are, I suppose. But if you're looking exactly just straight as it is, the SIG Energy does single and three phase full home instant backup. Yeah. So you can't argue with how that works. Yeah. Tested many times. Probably said before we do that test, if we're commissioning it late in the afternoon where hopefully the customer's at home, we put it in backup mode, they're watching TV with the lights on, nothing changes. Yeah. Obviously, if you do it with a BYD, it would cut out, wait 30 seconds and it would come on, which for some people might be perfectly fine. Yeah. It's just going to come down to what, to what your needs are and the backup will work well. Um, you've got the backup board or relays and contactors, so there's some options there. But the reliability with the SIG Energy Gateway and, and because of that instant change over, you, you, you can't get past that. Yeah, I agree. They're both good, aren't they, really? Yeah. It's just that delay. Yeah, for sure. Um, next one was the physical size and then obviously the kilowatt hours. So we've touched yeah. on a little bit that they're both modular, so you can stack them really and, 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 and size them accordingly. Um, but uh, which one there. is this one? Yeah, you, <laughs> that one is straight to SIG. You can't even make it. I don't, I don't think an argument the other way. Like Yeah, for size and storage. Yeah. We've done some big BYDs over the years, two full stacks, and you're talking two meters plus per stack for 22 kilowatt hours on a three-phase site. Height-wise. Height-wise, yeah. 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 So it, it's a big product. Yeah. So with the SIG Energy, you can condense that full stack with the inverter in just over 1.2 meters in yeah. height. Yeah, so slightly wider, but not drastically. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say slight, slightly wider uh, depth, and um, obviously is, is very similar. So if you've got a snug little garage that you've got to put it in, or the side of the home, that then neither of them are overly deep or anything. But I think if you're trending towards larger storage, which the industry is at the moment, or, yeah. or, the, or the consumer is, sorry, then you've just got to find the space for two full stacks which on a yeah. big home might be completely fine. Yeah. But if you're then potentially saying, look, I can do 48 kilowatt hours with the inverter at about, you know what I mean? 1.75 meters. Yeah, about pretty, height. <laughs> it's 1.76, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So it uh, may not necessarily be a problem for some, but ultimately from the clients that we're speaking to now that are looking towards those bigger solutions, it's um, yeah, absolutely phenomenal that SIG Energy are able to use obviously such a high density battery and, yeah. uh, and get it into such a such a small space. I wouldn't have wanted two stacks in my garage, to be honest, to get to the storage level that uh, that you can obviously up to 48 kilowatt hours with SIG. Yeah. So it's just such an energy dense battery. It's, yeah. it, it, I think it beats anyone there. And you can obviously do multiple SIG stacks. You could if you yeah. want to, yeah. One yeah. of our installers has got 96 kilowatt hours. Yeah. So I mean, in a smaller footprint, he's got more than double what the BYD is. There you go. So it's yeah, yeah pr pretty pretty easy there. Yeah. Um, in terms of the install location, um, yeah. both pretty good again. Yep. Um, obviously some considerations. One has the inverter that's not yeah built into the stack, and one has a gateway. Um, yeah. So the, yeah. the SIG's more flexible because you've got the gateway that, where possible, you'll try and attempt to keep it closer to the the switchboard, um, and then from that point you can run the AC and comms as far as it needs to be, obviously using the appropriate size. Yeah. But ultimately with the Fronius BYD, you can go further away with both from the switchboard initially, I suppose. Yeah. But then you need to keep the inverter and battery within five meters if possible. Um, obviously that part's DC to DC in there, whereas from the gateway to the SIG is AC with the comms. So it's more just around, I guess, because it's the all-in-one, and you've got the gateway, um, obviously, is that sort of hub next to the switchboard. You've probably got more flexibility there. Whereas if you run in, obviously, your Fronius BYD, the whole other side of the house, it, it, it can, and then you need the battery somewhere else. Sorry, is what I, what, I'm, what I was getting at there yeah. because of a regulation, because of a window or doors or something else, um, or if you've got space in your garage. So yeah. it'll come down to obviously if you've got an existing Fronius Gen 24 in place in a certain location. We've got to try and get the battery pretty close. Got to find, yeah. Whereas the SIG's probably going to offer more flexibility, either AC coupled or as an all-in-one. Um, so yeah, the, there's a few more options for it. Yeah, for sure. So a bit closer that one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Um, EV integration. So 
We've actually been, some of the comments have, have suggested that the SIG Energy e, uh, DC charger is, um, is a bit of a mute point, which I disagree with. I think um, when you look at other batteries, they're not offering that, SIG Energy is. Mm. So for me, that just means that it's a winner. Yeah. We're not suggesting you go and buy a SIG Energy DC charger if you don't have an EV. Yeah. That would be ridiculous. Yes. Um, <laughs> we would never suggest that but the fact that you can put one in yeah. if you choose to in the future has to give it the edge for me would you agree with that yeah for sure like so many clients are asking us about that integration and yeah as you said there it's the only one right now on the market that has the dc integration yeah you can do the ac with either of these options and, and a bundle of others which, yeah. which is still pretty awesome that yep. you can have it there but i think yeah if, you, if you're talking about purely keeping your options flexible it's more just finding the spot for it with the DC charger. We've done a few of them now where obviously if it's in your garage, great, because you've got the cable attached to the unit. But if you potentially doesn't fit in there or you don't want it in your garage, which some people don't necessarily, and we yeah. can find it outside, you've then obviously got to get the cable length there. So in some options where we've initially looked at a DC charger, we have switched to an AC SIG charger Fair sometimes. Enough. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, with with the integration with, with the BYD, with the, the Watt Pilot on the Fronia side, Pretty awesome, all in one ecosystem, which is which is pretty cool. Um, but again, it's got the option there, just doesn't have the, the DC option. Yeah, yeah. No, a few people have also commented it's it's expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah, that's and, for sure. Um, it might not be for everybody. You know, if you if you don't mind that you can't charge your car as quick as physically possible, then you'd yeah. never buy one. No. But if you're driving a lot, yeah, then it's something to consider for sure. This goes back to the point of some people still use the trickle charger yeah. to a power point or they've increased the power point to 15 amps or something. Yeah. That might be perfect for your situation where you're with a certain retailer or you can charge it at a certain time and you do a certain amount of Ks. Yeah. That's the information we want to try and get to say, okay, yeah, how many Ks do you drive? When do you charge? There's so many variables there. There's not just one thing that works for everyone. Yeah. And we've had people that have looked to purchase an AC charger that we've said, just stick with your trickle charger because mm -hmm. you work from home, you do a school run, something else so you do your school run you're then home for five hours just trickle charge it yeah it's perfect it's like that that's that's the ideal situation you can still save a couple of grand yeah but for a lot of other clients they want to get an at least an ac charger yeah because they want to be able to charge it at certain times that's what i have to do with mine the trickle charger wouldn't work for me yeah because i can only really charge it at the weekend maybe do a quick blast in the morning from from solar if i'm trying to minimize grid usage yeah or then I have to top it up at night, which again, isn't necessarily awful. But if I didn't have the AC charger, I'll be doing it every night. Yeah. And then I'm paying whatever the grid rate is. Yeah. So it's just about understanding what the needs are of that client. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're not trying to say throw a DC charger on every site because no. we tell a lot of people not to. Yeah. If you don't have a car, why would you? I don't know. <laughs> why, yeah. why would you do it? Someone like, I think assumed that's what we were suggesting. Yeah, no, but... not at all. Like, and it could be, you know, I mean, in five years' time, when it's mainstream, the price adjusts or it's superseded with a, with a different option, or the cars change completely. Yeah, there's so many variables there. We we just want to, if you have that car right now, and this is the need that you have, great, it'll work. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't, let's talk about some other options. Yeah, I think the point really is, we're trying to say which is better for EV integration. It has to be Sig Energy because they are the only one that give you the option to yeah. have that faster charging yeah. capability. Absolutely. And if BYD make one or another manufacturer make one, then they're in the mix to do that too. And exactly. we'd update the information. Exactly. Um, safety, yep. obviously both great batteries. Again, we install a lot of either of both of them, both very safe. Is there a winner there? I mean, yeah, as you said, they're both same chemistry, very, very safe battery. Um, obviously SIG Energy have been a bit of a pioneer in terms of the fire suppression and the sensors and everything else that they've built into it. I've got zero concern with BYD safety at all. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd still say both are pretty equal there. SIG have just put more more sensors in there, obviously to, if there is a problem, then you might pick up that information quicker potentially for, from that side. We're obviously trying to be as balanced as we can here, aren't we? And not slam BYD because we love them as well. Yeah, but correct. You've got to give that one to SIG again, haven't you? They've just advanced the, the features and, and yeah. BYD as yet 
haven't. So I was sitting on the fence there. <laughs> well, I think we're just trying to be trying to be non-biased, yeah, aren't we? Because yeah. I think you know we don't want this to be a sales pitch, and, no. and we're not affiliated with Sig Energy or BYD, other than we believe they're good products, and there's still a place for BYD, and yeah, they've got yeah, yeah. their new battery sure. coming, obviously. And uh, yeah. as we said before, they're a great company, but yeah. um, I think we've got to be honest to, about Sig as well. And, yeah. and there's a reason why we're installing so many of them compared to BYD, and safety is one of those things that people ask about a lot so yeah for that's sure. another tick in the box for sig for me absolutely uh, lastly warranty once again both great products is yeah. there a winner there the warranties are pr pretty pretty similar aren't they 70 percent 10 years yeah um, obviously similar on throughput which varies on the size of the battery obviously of course anyway yeah um, so both yeah i think both are pretty equal there um if you want to go back and, and be straight down the line the BYD brand has been around longer yes so you yeah. can throw a bit more weight behind it um but with the growth that sig energy have had um in a reasonable amount of time now it's uh yeah we're, we're not concerned about the warranty there either so um yeah they're both both great both great you could you could give that one to byd i think yeah, just yeah. purely because they've been around a lot longer as you say so yeah. the likelihood of one of them not being around to service your warranty falls closer to SIG than it does BYD. But yeah. as you say, we're not worried about that. We're um, pretty happy installing lots of them and it's our liability, obviously. So absolutely, um, both great products, both great warranties. Um, if you want more info, get in touch. I think we've covered everything off there. Yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty solid. Sweet, thank you. Thanks.